testing um, information session. Um, tonight, we'll be providing an overview of the program, addressing any questions that you may have in regards to logistics. And we'll also have information provided by Dr. Sampson Davis. But before we get started, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Ms. Um, Angie um, Valicello, and she will be providing information regarding on, uh, if you want to hear the program in Spanish, and then we'll turn it over to Mr. Sanchez, um, who will provide information if you want to hear this presentation in Haitian Creole. Uh, Ms. Angie. Buenas tardes, padres y familia. Vamos a estar aquí a empezar nuestra reunión. Pero antes que empecemos, solo quiero que ustedes sepan que tenemos la opción de tener eh, el programa en su idioma en español. Si usted quiere, aquí le vamos a enseñar cómo. En la parte derecha abajo de su pantalla va a haber una burbuja que dice interpretación. Usted lo va a tocar y ahí usted va a tener tres opciones, que es inglés, francés y español. Usted va a tocar español y usted va dirigido al cuarto donde usted va a tener a la señora Vivi en paz. Escribe, él va hablándole en español para su gusto. Ahora, si usted está en un teléfono, un poquito diferente, va a ver igual abajo, eh, donde dice más, va a haber tres burbujitas, usted va a tocar eso y va a salir diferentes opciones. Usted va a ver la última opción, que es interpretación de lenguaje, usted lo va a tocar, y igual le va a salir las tres opciones de lenguaje y usted va a presionar español y así va a estar dirigida la página, o, bueno, el cuarto donde van a hablar español para usted. Uh, Mr. Sanders, you can now say it in Haitian Creole. À tout le monde, à soi, on a bâti tout le monde option pour y aussi attendre sa capsule yo na créole. Si vous voulez aller me pas, ou si vous voulez aller me attendre sa capsule na créole là, vous pouvez gain option na en bas, vous pouvez vous pouvez gain gain marqué interpretation. La vous pouvez choisir interpretation. Là, vous choisissez vous pouvez anglais, français avec espagnol. Vous pouvez payer français. Next one, Angie. Thank you. Lelfin pese, Lelfin pese francea, wap, wap pese, um, wap, well, Lelfin pese francea, wap tende tout sa kap fe yo na francea swear. All right. Let me just um, take that spotlight off of this energy. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to um, now begin the um, presentation. But um, first off, I believe we have um, Superintendent of Schools joining us today, um, Dr. Fitzhu, who will be providing some um, words of welcome and really giving a really broad overview on expressing the importance of why we should have um, a program such as this in district. Dr. Good evening. Fitzhugh. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad to see our staff, our students, our families, part of this initiative this evening. I tell you this, as we have been working through COVID-19 as a school community, it has been eye-opening that testing is in the forefront of ensuring that all staff and students remain safe. We saw it on our surveys. We saw it in, in terms of our round tables that we had as related to the reopening of schools. And so, we work diligently to work with corporations to bring testing to our school district. This morning, I stopped at STEM Innovation Academy of the Oranges and I had the opportunity to sign up for my COVID test for next Monday. So again, it always starts at the top. We have to make sure that each of us are safe as we're going from school to school or if we are going from a class to the bathroom as an example. So we knew how important and how pivotal that testing is for our students and staff. We made a pledge that when our staff returned on April 12th and our students returned on April 19th, that we were gonna keep everyone safe. And that was in the forefront of the mission and vision of our reopening of schools plan. And I'm so pleased that we worked diligently with Dr. Sampson Davis and his team to ensure that we had testing in every location in Orange Township. That is the most important piece because we left no stone unturned. And to have a, a great group of folks working with our school community is so important. I'll be remiss if I did not thank the Board of Education who understood the importance of this work. We talked about it at the curriculum committee meeting and subsequently the Board of Education, they um, approved my recommendation to bring JL Holdings into the school district to ensure that testing would be implemented at every school building in this very school district. And with that being said, I look forward to hearing the presentation this evening from Dr. Davis and his team 
so that the full school community is aware about the parameters of health and safety we put in place for all safe, uh, I'm sorry, for all staff and students. To that end, I thank and I salute all of our parents and our families and our staff for being here this evening to hear the message. Thank you, Mr. Devon. And thank you, Dr. Fitzhugh. Um, and this um, session is being recorded and is on Facebook Live. So um, feel free to text a friend, tell them to um, tune in so they can get the information. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen here. All right, so this initiative, the Orange Public Schools COVID-19 um, testing program is a voluntary program, um, which is gonna be beginning on May 24th. Um, students who opt in or staff who opt in will be tested on a weekly basis. And I'll go over the schedule in a second. Um, this testing initiative, as mentioned by Dr. Fitzhugh, is led by Dr. Sampson Davis. Um, and his team at Jail Hudson Holdings. Um, Dr. Sampson Davis is the head of operations um, at the organization, and they are a leading force behind um, combating the fight against COVID-19. Um, you may be familiar with Dr. Davis because he's also known as one of the, of the three doctors who are nationally known philanthropists, um, inspirational speakers, and he's also a New York Times best-selling um, author as well as his um, other um, the other doctors. Um, he has assisted in, in expanding the outreach of services and offering multiple testing options to um, our students. Um, currently, um, the group operates in six testing centers throughout the East Coast and has numerous contracts with organization, organizations and companies for on-site testings. And I'll tell you that so you know that this is an organization that has been on the ground since day one, um, facilitating um, testing um, throughout, pretty much throughout the East Coast. So we are lucky to be partnering um, with them. Um, this program is being offered at no cost to district staff, parents, and or students. And if a student doesn't have insurance, um, this testing lab will be responsible for working directly with um, any uh, insurance companies and the CARE Act um, and regard, regarding reimbursement for the test. So, um, they ask the question, if a person does not have insurance, um, the testers can work with um, that individual or group of individuals, so, and they will be able to be uh, to get tested via the um, CARES Act. How often will students be tested? Um, as I stated earlier, that will be once per week. Um, hybrid students. So if you have a student um, attending school on Monday, Tuesday, they will be tested on Mondays. If you have a student testing, um, attending school hybrid on um, Thursday, Friday, they'll be tested on Thursdays. Middle school students and um, high school students will be tested on the day that they are attending school if they opt in. And fully remote students will have the option to be tested on Mondays. On Mondays, and they can be accompanied by an adult. Hybrid students are not allowed to have an adult accompany during um, testing. All right, so who will be conducting testing? Um, contest, um, testing will be conducted by trained specialists and you'll see a short video. Um, the testing is, is really quick uh, within 10 seconds um, and it's not as invasive as it was um, previously. Um, they'll be sure to be gentle and um, really engaging with the student to put them at ease. And there will always be school staff present um, during um, testing. Um, registration um, information is available online on the district website, and I'll show you that in a second at the um, COVID resources page. Um, or you can register on site. Um, you'll just have to bring the cassette form um, fill that out and bring a copy of your insurance card and um, photo ID. Results of the test will be available online. Um, and, and we have a link for that on the district website and the COVID resources section. Um, and information will be provided to the school nurse and an administrator. 
if a student test is positive um, during the uh, um, testing protocols, um, they will be retested and Mr. Uh, Dr. Davis will go deeper into what that looks like and we will follow COVID-19 protocols. All right, as I mentioned earlier, elementary schools, Mondays and Thursdays, depending on what day your, school, um, your student attends school. If your student attends um, Cleveland Street School, they are being tested on Mondays and Tuesdays, Monday or Tuesdays, and the same thing with um, John Robert Lewis Early Childhood Center. The secondary schools will be tested on, on the day that they attend and students enrolled in a twilight program will be tested on, on Tuesdays. For more information, um, I stated earlier, you can visit Orange Public Schools District website, the COVID resources page. If you have specific questions regarding the program in terms of scheduling, um, you can send information to the reopening of schools um, email address. If you have specific questions as related to the COVID-19 tests, so any medical questions can be sent directly to Dr. Um, Davis and that information is available um, on just the website, but after my presentation, I will put links to these three, um, to this information um, as well. All right, I'm gonna stop the share. Let me just go. All right. And as you go to um, attend school, you may see flyers around. There are flyers that provide general information about the testing during this week from Monday, May 7th, um, 17th um, to the 21st. Um, there was a uh, opportunity for everyone to do, um, to pre-register for testing because testing begins on May 24th. Um, for, um, 24th. And the information is available in Spanish and Haitian Creole. All right. If you visit the district website, the, the way you find the COVID-19 resources page is you wanna um, click on this link right here. But one thing um, I'd like to show you if you speak Spanish or Haitian Creole, you can translate the district web website into your respective language. You just have to scroll down to uh, find the language that you want to um, have the district website translated into. We don't have Haitian Creole, we do have French. I know it's not the same. But we do have, um, if you have any questions, you can send us a question um, directly. Simply click on the COVID Resources 19 um, page. And there are links here that will take you regarding to, for more information regarding um, in-person registration. If you want the consent form, that's available. If you click on this link here, um, the results link is there. And there's a letter that you may have received from your administrators. Um, which gives detailed information regarding um, this initiative. All right, so at this point, I will stop. And before we open it up for questions, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Davis and let him dig a little deeper into the registration process and talk about the specific tests that will be offered. And he also will show a video, um, Dr. Davis. All right, there we go. All right, thank you, Mr. Devon, and thank you, Dr. Fitzhugh, and all the board members and uh, teachers, educators for having us uh, do COVID testing uh, for your facility. Uh, as, as you know, COVID has made a huge impact uh, in, in, our, in us, in all of us, and in individuals, and us dealing with the, the challenges, families, friends. We all, I think, know someone who has been impacted by COVID, and now we're at a point where vaccines are. Uh, available and soon will be available for all our children, uh, I believe by fall. Uh, but with this right now, it's so important and imperative that we don't let down our guard and to be tested um, on a weekly basis is ideal for not only the safety of the individual and the family, but for the community at large. So with that, we're uh, prepared to offer testing for everyone for free. It's free for each individual. Uh, we do build the insurance, but if you don't have insurance, we have the CARES Act that will cover um, the the uh, COVID test. It is very uh, simple registration process. We have um, we have sort of orchestrated different ways to make it as easy for the families and and the 
educators as possible. You can register in, in person, you can register online, uh, work with the IT department to create an online registration process, whereas a busy parent, you can fill out all the information, upload all the documents, and your child will then be registered into the system and we can test your child uh, weekly. We do, do, we do offer the, uh, the rapid test. Now the rapid test has a sensitivity of about close to 90%, which is pretty, pretty decent. And it picks up pretty much all positive patients um, that are going to be positive. And with the rapid test, we are able to generate results within minutes. Um, and then those results will be available to you uh, and, the, and the staff, uh, to the parents and to the, uh, to the Orange uh, Board and, uh, and principals uh, immediately uh, that day. Uh, we will have the results available. Uh, if a child tests positive or if someone tests positive, or, uh, uh, you'll be notified and we will then do a PCR test. A PCR test is a bit more sensitive and sophisticated. I like to describe it as like sort of high def television compared to regular TV. We look at the uh, rapid test versus the PCR test. And again, all test results will be available by report uh, and we'll be, you have access to a portal link which you can go in and sort of access your results that day. We also have printout versions as well that we can offer you. I'm uh, driving up and they're not gonna let me get out. Uh, that you can uh, have available the following uh, day. So we have different ways of accessing. Oh, welcome. Sure. Oh, thank you. Are you got, did, I'm sorry, I don't know if I, if I was on mute. No, no, you're good. Okay. Did, did did you hear everything that I said before? I don't know if I... Okay. No, you're good. Okay. All right. So as we move at, at going back to school and, and, and especially as we move into the fall and have been um, schools reopen for everyone, full day access, we all know that, again, 2020 has been a hard year. Now 2021 has hope for a brighter future, uh, but COVID-19 is the third leading cause of death and individuals uh, in 2020. And, and although the younger population was not impacted as much as those that were older with core morbid issues, we're now seeing that the younger uh, population to be more at risk of being infected with COVID at being more or less, more likely silent carriers of COVID as well. And those who have medical issues in the younger population are vulnerable as well. Um, so it's important to get tested, even though this all this is volunteer uh, program, I highly recommend that everyone is tested uh, simply because you can be a silent carrier. And so regular testing is effective, is efficient in ident identifying a, a individual, not only for, again, not for them, for the families, but for the community at large, especially as we start to reintegrate into, into sort of social uh, interaction. And now the CDC has also uh, laid down the guard with saying that uh, if you're vaccinated, you could be you could be maskless when, when outside and indoors. So we want to make sure that we take all precautionary steps necessary to reduce the transmission by identifying potential outbreaks before they occur. And the only way to do that is through testing. Um, so this helps you know students, families, and staff to maintain a sense of security, um, especially as our youth move to being cleared for vaccinations until then, we can be for certain that we're testing to make sure that a person um, is safe and do not carry the virus. It helps to also trace and track potential risk and outbreaks as well. And helps to uh, keep risk at minimum so that we know that when our children are at school that they're engaging and interacting in a COVID free zone, which is extremely important. Okay, so this here is how the testing procedure works. It's a pretty simple anterior, what we call anterior nasal swab. And this is one of my physician assistants, Julia, performing the test on the youth. And you can see the, the swabs are very user-friendly now. We only go into what we call the anterior near, so we do not go past a certain point. Often hear patients say, oh, it's gonna hit my brain, but you can see the tip is in the anterior near. And, uh, we could do both sides, or we could do one side. Usually I do both sides for anterior and near simply because we don't go all the way up as we once used to. So we wanna make sure we get a good sample, but we can certainly just do one near on one side of the nose if need be. But uh, if you heard the child there in the video, she said it was very painless, very quick, and, and uh, we were able to give a result to her within minutes.
Okay, so the registration, this is always the sort of process. I, I have long days and nights trying to figure out ways to make this as simple as possible. In, in person registration is, is possible and is doable, but however, we have online registration to make it as user-friendly as possible. The, the way that the system works is that you have to pre-register first. You pre-register first uh, by going to um, um, the online scheduling. And you see the link there uh, below where it says patientportalevents.com. The online schedule, so you create, we're gonna show you a video of that, but you create a, a portal link registration process. You pick the school that you're attending and then and then you register that way to be tested on that day at your school. Once you create that, and here's the, uh, once you create that part of it, then you can go to the uh, account login and create an account. And that's where you would fill out the consent form as well as uh, fill out the, um, uh, as well as be able to retrieve your results from that portal itself. So we have a video as well that we will show you um, so that you can know how to retrieve your results and we will start the video now. I don't know if that has sound. If it, does it have sound? Because we can't hear it. Okay, I can walk you through it once the video gets going. So right here, what I did is I copied the link for the online scheduling right there. And we're going to then I copied it because it was in a Word document and want to paste it into the um, into the uh, into the web base. Okay, there we go. There was some, but I, I guess <laughs> it sort of got cut off there. But I copy and paste, and I so I put it into my Google Chrome and I dropped it there. And when you drop it into here, we're going to do that right now, and we're going to paste it. And it's going to bring you to the online scheduling process. And so there's two ways to do it, either through that link, or you could go through the website, fastcovidtestny.com. Uh, again, fastcovidtestny.com. And if you go down to where it says pre-registration there, you can click that button there. So you can either use the link or you can register through the website. And when you register through the website, it brings you back to that same page that you back saw previously. Same page. Are so you are, an existing patient? You yeah. click if you're not, you click no here. And then it states again uh, terms and conditions that you're being tested for COVID. You agree to be tested for COVID. And there's a language there just essentially explaining the testing process and um, um, just some demographic information is there. Uh, choose a reason. Again, there's a drop down box here. For COVID-19 testing, you select, you press next. And again, this is the location. Which school are you being tested? Cleveland, Forest Street, Haywood, um, Lincoln Avenue, uh, Oakwood, Orange Early. Uh, let's pick Orange High School for one. We click next. And here we have blocked out the days that we're testing at each school. So in Orange High School, you see these are the days that we're testing. If we were to change location and say, you know what, I am actually at Park Avenue School. You can see that Park Avenue School, we're testing Monday and Tuesday, and you just select the time. Now, the times doesn't matter because like any time between 745 and 935, but we're going to be at the school on those days from 745 to 945. So it doesn't matter what time you pick, you will be tested accordingly uh, during that two hour window. Uh, again, this is Park Avenue School, COVID-19 tests, May 24th at 920 a.m. Click next, and this where is where you upload your demographics. And I'm going to upload my demographics to walk you through it. I already have an account, but I'm going to, um, well, I shouldn't do that, but I, I will create a, I will create a new account. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I can do that during the demonstration. But, but basically, you, you put your information here, your first name, your last name, your date, the birth of your child, um, phone number, email address, email and address. And then you prefer language that you speak. 
your primary insurance, and what you have. If you don't have insurance, you put uh, uh, no insurance or, or um, none. And then you want to put your insurance card information here. We ask that you upload your files here. So here is where you upload your files. You would take a picture of, of, or of your file uh, for your photo ID front and back and your insurance front and back. And then you create an appointment and that appointment then you complete booking. After that, you have pre-registered to be tested. Once you have pre-registered to be tested, you now have to go to the other link in order to, um, to sign the consent. And this is the patient portal uh, um, consent form link that you have to go to in order to uh, create that portion of the uh, registration. So again, you click here, you can't, you can't do it from here, but you copy and paste and, and copy. And I'm gonna bring it back here. Yes. Are you an existing patient now? You're an existing patient yet next. And this allows you now to sign into the patient portal. And when you sign into the patient portal, if you haven't registered yet, you will register here. But you can't register for the patient portal until, until you have registered or pre-registered for a date of loading your documents. At that point, you can now register for the patient portal by creating a username or email that you have used. Rather, I'm sorry, so you're going to register here. This is walking through the process. And that's where you will put your first name, your last name, your email address. You will click I have read and agree to terms and you register. You will then have a login access to the patient portal. Since I have pre-registered already and I have created an account, I have a login. So I will go to sign in and I will put my username. Okay, I think um, you may have got cut off there, but the, the completion of the video shows um, shows me registering it into the account, and on there is a consent form in, in uh, three languages, English, uh, Spanish, and uh, Haitian Creole, and you will complete the consent form um, in, order to, uh, in order to complete the consent for the child registration, and that will uh, then allow you to either fill up the, fill out the consent form online or, uh, or you could print it out and bring it in, whichever is easier for you. But there's the ability to type right into the boxes once you register for the portal, uh, make the registration for your child visit. There's a process, there's a, once you create that account, you can now register uh, the consent form you can sign online there itself without sort of bringing it in. But if you choose to print out and bring it in, you can as well. And then therefore your consent is uploaded, the documents are uploaded, your child is on the schedule to be tested. And, uh, and then therefore we're able to proceed moving forward with the testing uh, accordingly uh, every week. And so uh, that, it, it's a bit of a learning curve and, um, and I'm sure we'll get there where we need to be. But if you have any questions, um, you can uh, obviously, reach out to me at any time that my uh, number there is listed as well as the email COVID test nygmail.com. Uh, Nikki Austin is also present on the call and she is a part of the process as well. And she's our administrative coordinator. And you can reach out to her as well uh, at the number listed uh, to ask any questions. And, um, and that concludes the presentation from our end and we'll happily answer any questions. Thank you again, Mr. Devone. And, and uh, as well as uh, Dr. Fitz, he will appreciate the opportunity here.
If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat or if you raise your hand using the reactions um, button, um, you'll be recognized. Um, I have one. Um, Dr. Davis, can you talk to the requirement for a social security number? Um, I know we talked about utilizing a student ID in lieu of um, right. social security number. So what we're going to do on the on the consent form, there is for the there is a space for the um, for the student ID, and so that is removed. I am going to remove the social security number from the uh, registration process. So when you go online to create an account, and you have to put in your, your information, that social security number will still be there, but it won't be mandatory to enter. So it will be a bypass. If you prefer not to put your social security number, that's okay. Uh, will be a bypass. I can't remove it completely, but we will be able to move past it without entering the social security number online for the online registration process. So Dr. Davis, I'm gonna say a question. Um, so if when a student tests positive, what happens then? Also, will this continue into the next year? I'll take you on a, the second part of that question. You can address the first part. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if a, if a student test positive, we will recommend that we follow CDC guidelines, which is a period of quarantine uh, that is always changing right now. It is recommend seven to 10 days for uh, mild or no symptoms from the day that they were tested. Uh, we would then also recommend ideally that everyone in close surroundings should be tested uh, to make sure that they are not um, impacted or, or infected with COVID as well. We will also, for that particular individual, we will do a PCR test to confirm the rapid test and make sure that it's, again, accurate and, and with the sensitivity and specificity for the test to make sure that if it is a true positive for a rapid test that the PCR duplicates the same results. Right, in regards to testing, um, so testing will be through the summer of, of 2021. And then, you know, we'll assess, you know, at the end of the summer, what it's gonna look like before for the um, upcoming school year. That is correct. Yeah, I believe, you know, we have a better, a better understanding and picture of where we are as we move into the summer months. Um, my thinking is that it is difficult to say what the impact of COVID is going to be in September. Um, but if, but we will be available to test. Um, it will be available to test if, if, uh, if need be. And again, I know this is a voluntary program, but you know, for me, it's a peace of mind. I'm fully vaccinated and I still get tested periodically because there's a possibility that I can still uh, transmit the uh, virus if I'm a carrier of it. The vaccine does not prevent the virus. What it does is prevent moderate to severe symptoms. So you still can contract the virus, uh, such as uh, I think it was seven or eight of the New York uh, Yankees players uh, experienced that as well as Bill Maher as well. He's a TV host from HBO uh, show as well. He, they all been vaccinated and they still all tested positive for uh, COVID-19. And, uh, and Mr. Devon, if I may, I think we have the video piece portion of the consent. Uh, it, it cut off prematurely, but we can, we can move back to showing that portion of the consent form if that's okay. Sure, Nikki, go ahead and um, share your screen. And we will definitely address all questions. So we'll get back to the questions right after the video. Okay, so once you are in the patient portal, you created your account and you are all logged log in access to the patient portal. Since I have pre-registered already and I have created an account, I have a login. So I will go to sign in and I will put my username That's where it seems to freeze. Okay. All right. Seems to freeze there, but um, so what we'll do is, um, Dr. David, just for the sense of time, um, unless we can get it working, we will definitely have this posted on the district website, so you will have it um as a reference for sure. 
Okay. All right. That works. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So um, in terms of questions, um, is it still necessary for all staff and students to quarantine based on one positive case in our school building? Um, that's a question for um, Dr. Um, Fitzhugh. Dr. Fitzhugh, have you on the bill? Are, are you on the line? All right. So I will get that question um, answered directly. All right. Um, the second question is, um, do you only need to register once? That's the, so we have duration consents. Ideally, um, you will register or, or, or assign consents each time, but we have a duration consent until August 31st. So once you register once for, for your child, they will be able to test weekly without having to go through the process again. Once we have especially right now during this week of pre-registration, it's vital that we have all documents that we need. That's your insurance if you have and your ID if you have, uh, your ID as well so that we can have everything in the system. So when we start the test next week, everything is ready to go. Once all that is secured into the system, everyone is locked in per se to be tested without having to go through the process over and over again. So you will be in our system and for the duration of the testing for the rest of the school year and the summer, uh, we can provide as well if there's a uh, summer school in process as well, but you would be in the system and we'll only have to register that one time. All right. Um, let me see what the next question is. It was a question regarding, um, is it necessary to do COVID testing? My child already got his vaccine. I believe you answered that, but you wanna? Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Um, why do the testing over and over again? And so, again, it's a peace of mind because of the ability to transmit the virus. Uh, again, the vaccine thankfully protects you. The studies show that it protects from moderate to severe symptoms. So you still can pick up the virus. And ideally with the vaccine, your symptoms will be mild at most, but most likely you have no symptoms and you will then be able to transmit it to other people. So that's why testing is important, especially in areas of school based because of all the youth being together, educated being together, staff being together. So it's an area of gathering. So having the opportunity to test is, is important in those arenas because of the amount of people that surround each other. So yes, if you've been vaccinated, I still do recommend, you know, periodic testing to make sure all is safe. Um, are there any additional questions? Now is the time, but feel free. There are several options for you to, if you can't think of anything now, I put in the chat several emails where you can send questions to. Well, I see a hand raised, uh, Ms. Nikki Moore. Mm -hmm. Let me see, you can go ahead. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Ms. Moore. You. Miss Moore, you're muted. You have to unmute yourself. Hello? Yes. Yes. Okay. I had sent you some emails about registering in person. Um, and you said I could have came up to it today, but I had to work. But I'm going online right now and it's saying that the patient portal cannot be reached. Patient portal cannot be reached. Did you do the pre-registration process? That's what I'm trying to do. And it's telling me that the portal cannot be reached. Um, yes, sir. Can I share? I'm not good at this. Let me see if I can share my screen. Let me try and see if I can get it. Question number 10. Africa is the blank continent. Small second smallest, largest, second largest. I'm just checking now. That should not be the case, but let me see if um twelve are correct there. And our podium belongs to Okay. So I want to try to share my screen. I'm not good at this, but let's see what we can make happen here. Um I think I'm in the meeting. Where am I? Um if you share your screen, you wanna um 
look look at the screen where you last were. And then you might have to look at the tabs that are open that would allow you to get to the page you need to get to. There you go. Am I, I think I'm on, right? Can you guys, I don't yes. know if you can see my screen. You can see my screen? Yes. Oh, yeah. look at this. I'm learning. I am so having a proud moment here. Okay. So if you go to fastcovidtest.com, this is a lot better than the video I showed you too. Um, so fastcovidtestny.com. Let's close this out here. And if you go to pre-register, so you have to pre-register first. Are you existing patient? So I, I'm an existing patient, but just for explanation, I'm going to say no, because it gives the pre-existing, a, a pre-registered patient has been, I mean, a registered patient doesn't have to go through the detailed process of uploading everything because everything's into the system already. But I say no. And this, again, in terms of- Mr. Davis, I'm yes. sorry, I'm not, not to cut you off, but when we, when I was trying to go through the school website, yeah. it's telling me that the portal was unavailable. So right, me, just go to this website instead. Yeah, we may have to, I don't know what, it might be something. It it's may be it's something. actually working on a school website now because I just did it myself. But Ms. Moore, we, we, we can address your question um, afterwards. You can, call, you can contact me directly and I can kind of walk you through it. Can I? Okay. Mr. Devon, why, why I have everyone here, can I just run through this process? Because it's a lot sure. clearer, I think, on this, on this version here and then I can share the screen. Mm -hmm. So I agree here. I'm just going to quickly run through this. Again, you're choosing the reason to be tested is COVID-19. Uh, next, the location of the school that you attend. Um, so if it's John Roberts, uh, the, you, I'm the provider there. And you hit next. And then again, the days, I said Monday, Tuesday for one of the schools before it was actually Monday, Thursday. But as you can see, the boxes that are, are highlighted are the days that we test at that particular school. So if I choose Tuesday, the 25th, it doesn't matter which time you select it, it, because we're going to be testing everyone from 745 to 945. So you can select any time. As you can see, I'm scheduled for COVID-19 at uh, John Roberts uh, Lewis Early Childhood School on this date. I hit next. And then again, I upload all my demographics, my name, uh, uh, last name, birthday. As you can see, I, I was working with IT while we were on the phone. They removed the social security number that is gone now. So you don't have to put in a social security number, your email, your address, and then you wanna upload your, your file documents here, um, right here. So that's where you're gonna upload your picture ID, front and back and your insurance card uh, front and back. And again, if you this, you choose your insurance carrier, if you don't have insurance, you click none. There's no charge to you at all, uh, the patient, and you press complete booking. Once that is completed, then you go into the patient portal and you register to create an account. Again, I have an account already created, so I can't duplicate a new account but just now that I could get in and you can see it, I can log in real fast just to show you the consent form and then we'll be all done uh, with this here. And so, as you can see, there's different forms that's available. And, as, and if I click the forms, we have uh, Haitian Creole, English, and Spanish. So if I, I started a process of um, creating my, uh, form before, but as you can see, it's pretty self-explanatory as to what to do. You put the day, today's date in, you put your child's name in, um, you know, a, your address, city zip code, the child's date of birth, your student ID, the parent's name, phone number. This is a cell number. We prefer cell numbers just in case if we need to text you or reach you and uh, just easy access in, in order to do so, um, maybe text you on this number, yes or no, email address for you as well, maybe email you, yes or no. Um, pretty much the rest is self-explanatory or your existing patient would be no for the first time users, any medical conditions, any allergies, um, test reasons. If you're hybrid or if you're full-time um, remote, you click the grade, and then as the parent, 
you can simply go in and sign as such and then hit submit. And that then is the consent form that is populated and will be used for the duration of the year. And uh, this is where you will go to retrieve your results as well. And, um, and that's the uh, consent form uh, process. And so I think that kind of is a bit more helpful in explaining everything. And I will now unshare my screen once I figure out how to do it. <laughs> Go down to the bottom. <laughs> okay, <There you> go. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> All right, so there, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, one question is if they uh, filled out their paperwork on site, do they still need to go online? No, no, you don't. Uh, the only time you would need to go online is to retrieve your results. So you would have to create a portal link. Now, there's two ways to look at it. If we don't reach out to you and notify you, then it is a negative result. But if you want to have the documentation, which is important, you still have to create a portal uh, registration link so you can retrieve those results. I am working on a process now to simplify where you can just put your chart number in, your last name and your month that you were born in. That's the process I'm working on to sort of streamline it. But for now, you still have to create a, uh, you still have to register for the portal to retrieve your results if you want a hard copy of the results. And there were some people that filled out their paperwork at the schools, but they did not provide photo ID or insurance card information. So you are not fully registered if you did not provide the photo ID and insurance card information. So um, you can go online and uh, finish that process. Or um, if you want your student to be tested beginning on Monday, you'll have to bring that information with you um, on Monday. That's that consent form, and that's available on the district website that you can download and bring a copy of your photo ID and insurance card, front and back of both. And, and let me add, uh, my, my staff is attempting to reach everyone that has filled out a consent form, but we don't have all the materials so that we can retrieve those. So we're making it so that you can either text us or email us a copy of that uh, information if you're unable to bring it to us before the week's end. Right. So uh, just a few more questions. Um, we're going to wrap up around eight. Um, so if a student is vaccinated, do they still need to wear their mask? The CDC is recommending no. Uh, again, I, I leave that up to each individual uh, because we're, it's an honor system. I don't know who's truly vaccinated or who's not vaccinated. There's no um, way to sort of uh, prove that. But as a vaccinated person myself, I recommend, and as I recommend if you're outside and you're not in close surroundings that it's okay to uh, go mask less. But in close quarters where other people are present and you're, and you're inter interacting, then I think it's still ideal for right now to wear a mask. So I, I, it's kind of a hybrid, I guess, answer, no pun intended, but it's in, in the sense that I think if you're in close quarters, you want to make sure you still wear masks if you're vaccinated. Outside in open air with some distance, then it's okay to go maskless. Right. So, um, and we, we have Dr. Fitzhugh, I think I just saw him online. Um, Dr. Fitzhugh, um, just two questions for you. Um, it is still district policy that all staff and students wear a mask in school in the, while they're in the school buildings. I mean, I thought I just saw him there, but he... okay. I think I just lost him. All right, so I'm gonna get back to um. And the, the other question, I'll get back to Dr. Fitzhugh in a second. Um, if a staff member signs up. Um, to participate, will they be, be um, prioritized in the front of the line? So staff can get VIP service if that is your, um, your question. <laughs> we wanna get staff into the classrooms and ready to um, um, teach students. And so you will um, be pushed to the front of the, of the line. As you saw from the video, the whole test is only um, 10 seconds or less.
Yeah, I think we're also, uh, Mr. Devon, is uh, encouraging staff because we're going to be there from 745 to 945, but during the 745 to 815 portion before the start of school, we're going to encourage staff to arrive so we can test them during that time as well. Okay. So I see, I don't know. Dr. Fitzgerald, can you unmute yourself? Or you are unable to? No, I can't. Okay. All right. Can you address the um, issue regarding um, wearing of masks um, in the school buildings? Is it, is it a still a requirement for students? It's still a requirement. We just want to make sure that everyone remains safe um, until this time where, you know, we continue to see that things are moving in a, a better trajectory. We just made the decision holistically that we're going to keep the masks um, on. We've been, we haven't had any outbreaks. We have not had to quarantine any classrooms or any part of our cohorts. So I think it's what we're doing is in the best interest of um, health and safety um, within our district. All right, and one more. Um, if there is a positive test in a school building, does the whole school building have to um, quarantine? No, so that's all predicated on why we have the cohorts. So we have to look at those folks that are in the cohorts and look at the amount of time without a mask that folks were near another individual. So again, we are, at this point, we haven't had to quarantine any classrooms because we've been doing everything right to ensure health and safety. All right, and the last question is, if a person signs up, can they cancel participation? Um, this is a voluntary program. So um, we'd like for you to continue participation, but if um, you opt out, you do have that option to opt your um, student out. All right, so uh, we have about four minutes left. Are there any other questions? And once again, if you do have questions that you think of after this, you could contact um, reopening of schools, or if you have any medical questions, mm -hmm. um, you can contact Dr. Sampson, um, Dr. Davis um, directly. And that information is on the website and the links are also in the chat as well for you. All right. Hola. All right. Sí, yo necesito preguntar algo. Okay, we need to mute. Este, para la registración, toda la información que va a ir es de los papás y de los niños o solamente de uno de los dos? Okay, hold on. I, I'm going to answer yes, that question. Okay. Okay. Uh, she's asking if she wanted to get tested, would she have to also um, fill out or is it just for the students? Yeah, this program is only for students and staff members, Orange Public School staff members and students enrolled in Orange Public Schools at this time. It's not for um, family members who are not enrolled in Orange Public Schools. Sí. Y otra pregunta, este, ahí dice que en esta identificación, ¿cuál sería la identificación del niño o del padre? Con foto. Del niño. Bueno, del padre, si el niño está muy joven. Sí, mi niña tiene tres años. So, so, va a ser el suyo. Ok, está bien. Gracias. De nada. Ok. All right, so um, let me just double check the chat to make sure there aren't any other outstanding questions. All right, so um, at this point, I'm gonna conclude the program. Thank you for your participation. Um, please um, spread the word. Um, this program is once again open to all staff members and all students enrolled. Um, tomorrow, if you're in district, you can um, register in person and or like Dr. Davis just showed you, you can register online, which is probably preferred. Um, if you go to the district website, I just checked, the link is active now. But if you have any questions regarding that, you can send it to Reopening of Schools and we can work with you to get you registered online. Yeah. All right, so yeah. thank you for your participation. Thank and you, thank you, thank you. Everyone have a great evening. Dr. Oh, Dr. Fitzhugh, any word, last words? No, I just wanna thank um, our staff, our students, our families for being here this evening. Again, Dr. Sampson, thank you for um, giving us some powerful information about you know, the vaccine and about the testing, because it's really important to hear it from the experts. 
So we just um, would like to thank you as well. And on behalf of the um, Board of Education, we couldn't do this work without our, our stakeholders. So thank you so very much. All right, thank you everyone. Um, have a great weekend and have a great Friday. Take care. Thank you. OCS staff and um, everyone, um, OCF staff, please remain on as well as Dr. Sampson. Oh, and thank you to our translators. <laughs> Forgot to do that. I wanted to remind everyone too, if they have filled out a consent form to bring all of their identifiers tomorrow as well, we can um, make sure that we capture that information they haven't given it to us as of yet, their IDs and insurance information. Just waiting for a few more people to log off. Okay. Dr. Davis, I was at the, um, the STEM school today and I find myself, you know, every morning before I go into the office, I'll stop at one school or another school, so on and so forth. Oh, I think Ms. Singleton has a question before she leaves out. Yes, I'm sorry. I had a quick question for the doctor. Yeah, I sure. Sure. The, um, for the children 12 and up, is the only vaccine currently available for them is the Pfizer one? I, I believe so, but that's going to change. Um, Moderna, okay. I'm sure we'll get FDA approval and then they're looking by fall to, to make it available. And if all the, um, if everything continues in the right direction for two years of age and older by fall is the goal. Would that also, they would get two doses as well as the ones like that we got? Yeah, but it'd be two doses, but it's not going to be the same concentration. So it's not going to be as, uh, you know, it's going to be according to their body size and their weight. 